I recently did a soundbite video in which I was imploring the public to stop calling zenith error correction zenith adjustment because, well, you can't adjust zenith. You can either correct for zenith error or you can align the cantilever. In both cases, you're aligning the cantilever, but you're aiming at two different goals for them. In the case of zenith error correction, what we're aiming at is to align the left and right contact points on the stylus to read the groove perfectly in time with each other. When we're aligning the cantilever, we are, in most, most all cases, we are, uh, we are aiming for tangency of the cantilever at the null points. But if you're correcting for a zenith error, then you're deliberately misaligning the cantilever at those same null points in order to favor the zenith error correction. So I want to talk about that conflict because we have been, we've been told since the 1930s that we need to align the cantilever for tangency at the null points to decrease nonlinear distortions, mostly in the form of second order harmonic distortions, which by the way can be a little bit pleasing. Um, and now I'm saying something that flies in the face of that, that we should, if we have zenith error to make up for on our stylus cantilever assembly, that we should defy those instructions and misalign the cantilever. So these two things are in conflict with each other. Zenith error correction, if you need it, and cantilever alignment. So how to manage this conflict between distortions? Between, on one hand, a linear distortion, zenith error correction, and a nonlinear distortion, uh, cantilever well, tracking error, which is what lack of tangency at the groove for the cantilever is, it's tracking error. Well, it comes down to, the answer is going to come down to, what is our ear most sensitive to? In the paper that we will be submitting later this year, on zenith error and its correction, we will touch upon this question. But I want to share with you uh, what I suppose is some anecdotal evidence at this point that suggests quite strongly that we're far more sensitive to the linear distortion created by zenith error versus the nonlinear distortion created by um, cantilever tracking error. Clients who send us cartridges that have quite a lot of zenith error, we're talking four and a half, five plus degrees and more, we encourage them to listen to their cartridges at the full amount of zenith error correction, let's say five degrees, five and a half, six degrees, and then something less than that and see what they like better. So far from what I've heard from these clients, all of them prefer the full amount of zenith error correction despite the increase in tracking error. The evidence seems to be suggesting that our ears are far more sensitive to the timing distortions inherent in zenith error at the time of playback um, versus tracking error. But we'll be continuing to monitor this and eventually write more about it. In the meantime, the point of this video is to recognize that there is a conflict between the two. You can't have your cake and eat it too. One way or the other, you're going to be introducing a, an, an additional distortion. The question is, what is the ear? most sensitive to. And so far, the evidence seems to be solidly pointing in the direction that the ear is far more sensitive to timing distortions that occur when zenith error exists versus tracking error. There was a paper in the Journal of Audio Engineering Society, I believe that it was submitted in the early 2000s, um, where they recreated the effects of uh, tracking error in, in digital files and had people, a panel of people, listen to whether they could hear this distortion characteristic. The paper summarized that their listening audiences were unable to hear the distortion characteristics that are inherent in tracking angle error uh, on regular music, but they could hear it in sine waves. 
This is another reason to suggest why tracking error could be a lot more benign than zenith error. So until next week on the next soundbite video, see ya.